Good afternoon. Today is March 21st, and we are standing in a field here at the Carville Research and Education Center in Georgetown, Delaware, in a field that has been prepared for seed corn maggot research. Seed corn maggot on Delmarva is a sporadic but extremely important pest early in the season. It's also a major pest in the Northeast, as well as the upper Midwest states like Wisconsin, Minnesota, and the Dakotas. Seed corn maggot overwinters as a pupa stage. And as the uh, winter transitions to spring, those overwintering flies emerge out of the soil and they start laying eggs in soil. The maggots that hatch from those eggs feed on organic matter. And if we plant into the uh, infested field, those maggots will feed on the germinating and, and swelling seed potentially destroying that seed before it emerges out of the ground or infesting and damaging the root system after the seed has germinated so that you have a, a runty seed. We have historically managed seed corn maggot through a combination of cultural practices uh, such as delayed planting dates and no-till agriculture as well as with insecticidal seed treatments. So that way the seed is already protected once it gets into the ground. Historically, the, the two seed treatment active ingredients that we have used have been chlorpyrifos and the neonicotinoid class chemistries such as thymethoxam or clothianidin. Last year, the EPA moved to revoke all food tolerances for chlorpyrifos. So we can no longer use the active ingredient if it has been applied to a food crop after February 28 of 2022. So that really limits our options. Other states where seed corn maggot is a major pest of concern, particularly on vegetables, have moved to severely restrict the use of the neonicotinoid class of chemistry. So we need more options. And that is the purpose for doing this research. This is one of our first trials of the spring. Seed corn maggot starts developing once the, the temperature is above 39 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold. Uh, peas also start developing at 39 degrees. So that's why the, the two on Delmarva uh, often coincide with each other in terms of planting dates. So we have two planting dates that we are uh, interested in and we conduct our research on. The first is right about now. Uh, depending on the year and the weather conditions, it can be anywhere from as early as March 15th to as late as April 15th. We track that with growing degree days. Uh, and I will leave a link to a University of Wisconsin fact sheet that explains growing degree days and how to calculate them uh, in this video. But essentially, we are targeting 360 growing degree days with a base temperature of 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Once we're getting close to that, the, the flies are beginning to emerge so if you get a nice warm day such as today, when we're around that peak predicted emergence uh, and you, you fluff up a field like this, you will see flies resting on the soil surface. And most of those are going to be seed corn maggot. So in this field, we prepared it first in the fall by planting a legume cover crop. So this is Austrian winter pea we planted in the fall and once we hit the uh, degree day target, we have disked it under. Our farm manager has also been kind enough to spread a, a chicken manure in this field. This is the formula that has been developed over a number of years, not just by myself, but also by my colleagues in other states and my predecessor. So we spread two to four tons of chicken manure and disk under a cover crop to attract seed corn maggot to this field. So tomorrow, this field is going to be chisel plowed one more time and then leveled. So we'll be ready to plant into it at the end of this week and early next week. When we prepare fields for seed corn maggot, the ideal weather environment calls for several warm days to get a lot of fly activity. So they're going to come into the field. 
they're going to start laying eggs. Then that'll be followed by a nice gentle rain to keep the field nice and moist for those maggots. And then it's going to be followed by a cool down so that when we plant, we're planting into cold soil and so the seed is just kind of sitting there growing very slowly. That gives the seed corn maggot as much time as possible to attack the seeds, to pick up on the insecticide and die, or to overwhelm that insecticide and destroy the seed. And that's how we tell treatment differences apart from each other. We come in and we start doing stand counts. So we know how many seed we're putting in a row and how much should be there and how much actually comes up. We also grade that for what we call runts. When the seed corn maggot has hit the root system or the stem underground. So even though that plant has emerged, it might be suffering underground. And there's a period of time in which it can still be killed. So as we walk through this field, I'm looking at the ground and I'm just seeing a lot of flies move out of the way. Those are all seed corn maggot. Now I've also got here dog food. We will spread dog food out on our plots. Uh, and the reason for that is historically the formula for attracting seed corn maggot involved the addition of bone and meat meal onto plots once they were planted. Well, my source of bone and meat meal is, is no longer available, but bone and meat meal and chicken byproduct meal is a very common ingredient in pet food. So it might sound really silly, but it's a formula that has worked really well for us. It's a formula that has worked well for others. And I'd rather not go away from that formula too much. So we'll be spreading dog food out onto the plots and it's going to absorb moisture and just kind of be this this nice yummy protein snack for these flies so they can lay more eggs. So what can you do? Well, we've got, like I said, two planting windows of interest. The first planting window is the, is the hardest one. Uh, that's when the soil is still rather cool and we can get cold fronts coming through that'll push the soil temperatures back down into the low 40s again. Later on, about four weeks after the first generation, the second generation will come out. And we track that again using those same degree days um, for our second planting window. That's the planting window that occasionally gets our field crops like soybeans and field corn. So if you're incorporating organic matter into the soil, uh, whether that is a cover crop or weeds or a lot of, a lot of uh, crop residue from the previous year, or if you're spreading chicken manure, which is very common here on Delmarva, you'll want to wait a couple of weeks after you apply that organic matter before you plant. That gives any maggots that have been laid in that field the opportunity to finish up their development and start pupating before we plant. So that's one way to kind of avoid a seed corn maggot issue. The other is if you are planting early, you may want to consider a seed treatment of some sort or the potential addition of an insecticide over the top or in the furrow, depending on what's labeled. And please uh, discuss this with your local friendly county extension agent. Uh, we are conducting some research on uh, insecticides applied to the soil as well. Uh, it can look pretty variable, but seed treatments can also look variable depending on the weather conditions. In 2020, we planted our trial March 16th. We had a very warm and mild winter, so our, our trial was early. And our drill was set up to put that seed a little bit deeper than I would have liked. So in this photo, you can see that uh, we've got, I've arranged these seeds so that the, in relative order based on their seeding depth. And you can see that the only seed here in this photo that has emerged and germinated and broken through the soil was shallowly planted. Whereas the seeds that have died have all been deeper planted. So you may want to consider planting that seed a little bit shallower. You still want to get it in the ground. 
you still need to get good seed soil contact but don't plant it too deep if it's planted too deep it's going to have a harder time pushing out of the soil and that gives seed corn maggot plenty of opportunity to hit that seed as it's coming up the other thing that's worth mentioning is that even with seed treatments it is possible to overwhelm those seed treatments depending on weather conditions if it is extremely wet the seed treatments get into the plants by dissolving in water and then getting sucked up into the plant's vascular system if it's extremely wet the seed treatments will dissolve in water and will move through the soil profile away from the seed leaving that seed with less protection heavier soils sometimes have a influence how those seed treatments work as well as again cold weather conditions if that seed is just sitting either underground because it's cold or has emerged but is is not growing because of a cold spell again that slows down that seed and and seed corn maggot being able to grow at a lower temperature than most of our vegetable seed and our field crop seed has more time to work on that seed so stay tuned uh, we will be planting this field into snap beans, into peas, into sweet corn this spring, and we will post our results onto the University of Delaware Extension Demonstration Results page under the Cooperative Extension Pest Management tabs. Thank you very much.